Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to find the formula for volumes of cones using this formula right over here. Now, this formula states that volume equals integrate from x is b to x is a pi y squared dx which equals pi multiplied by the function of b minus the function of a. If you're wondering why we must use this equation to find the formula for volumes of cones, please visit the link below this video where I'll explain to you how you can find volumes using coordinate axes. Alright, now I'm going to be talking about cones for a little bit. The base of cones are circles. Therefore, the base of a cone must have a radius. So I'm going to draw a radius here. What a cone also has is a height. So I'm going to call this line, this vertical line here, height, and this horizontal line here, radius. And I'm going to put the right angled triangle sign over here. So we've got a right angled triangle inside this cone. So these are the properties of cones that we need to be aware of before we find the formula for volumes of cones. Okay, to my right I have a set of coordinate axes. From the point 0, 0 I'm going to draw a line. This line will be the line y equals m multiplied by x plus a constant. Now this m here is actually the gradient of this line. And the gradient is usually y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, now that we've got this line, let's put two points on it. Let's give it a point P, which has coordinates 0, 0. And let's give it a point Q, which has coordinates change in x, change in y. From Q to y equals 0, let's create another line. And let's call this point here on the line x, n. And let's give it coordinates, change in x, 0. Also, let's put the right angled triangle sign over here. OK, now that we've got this right angled triangle over here, let's see its relationship to the right angled triangle contained inside the cone to our left. As you can see, this right angle triangle has a height and it also has a radius. So you can see from the point P to the point N, we have a height. And from the point N to the point Q, we have a radius. Now this height is in fact change in X and this radius is change in y. So the point Q actually has the coordinates h, r. Okay, just in case you're wondering why we're doing all this, I'm actually looking for the value of y here. I want to know its exact value so that I can integrate and then find the formula for volumes of cones. Okay, since we know what y is, let's go about finding its value. So to find its value, we're going to plug other values into the equation y equals m multiplied by x plus a constant. Now, at point p, when x is 0, y is also 0. So if y equals 
m multiplied by x plus a constant 0 equals m multiplied by 0 plus c. Therefore, c must be equal to 0. So we can get rid of the c in this equation right over here. If we do that, the equation of the line becomes y equals m multiplied by x. But what is m? m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is actually r, as r is change in y. So let's put r over here. And what is y1? Well, y1 is 0. So we'll put 0 over here. Now, what is x2? x2 is change in x, which is h. So let's put h over here. I'll put the minus sign over there. What is x1? x1 is 0. So m is equal to r over h. So the equation of the line that we were dealing with is y equals r over h multiplied by x. And since we're looking for y squared to integrate, let's square r over h multiplied by x. So y squared equals r squared x squared over h squared. Okay, so we've got y squared, but we need to know what b is and a is in this formula. Let's imagine a vertical line going through q. And let's call this line x equals b. And let's imagine a vertical line going through p. And let's call this line x equals a. Now, if we look at this carefully, b is actually change in x. But change in x is h. And if we look at this line carefully, x is actually 0. So a is 0. Knowing this, we can now begin to integrate and find the formula for volumes of cones. All right, I'm now going to copy the formula up here. So, volume equals integrate from x is b to x is a pi y squared dx, which equals pi multiplied by function of b minus function of a. Now, we know that b equals h. And we know that a equals 0. And we know that y squared is r squared multiplied by x squared over h squared. So let's use it in the formula above. If we do this, we get volume equals integrate from x is h to x is 0 pi multiplied by 
r squared multiplied by x squared over h squared dx. And we can simplify this equation further. So integrate from x is h to x is 0 pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by x squared over h squared dx. Now for those of you who have studied integration, you should know that this equals in brackets pi r squared over h squared multiplied by x to the power of 3 over 3 and we put a h up here and a 0 down here and this can be simplified further so we get in brackets pi r squared multiplied by x to the power of 3 over h squared over 3 We'll put the h up here and the 0 here. And if we simplify this further, we get in brackets pi r squared multiplied by x to the power of 3 over 3h squared. We'll put a h up here and we'll put a 0 down here. Now, from here, we will get in brackets pi r squared multiplied by h to the power of 3 over 3 multiplied by h squared minus in brackets pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by 0 to the power of 3 over 3 multiplied by h squared which equals, we can cancel what's inside these brackets because we've got a 0 to the power of 3 up here. So we're left with pi r squared multiplied by h to the power of 3 over 3h squared. And we know that this is pi r squared multiplied by h over 3. And you should be familiar with this equation here. So from here we get a third multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by h. So this is the formula we use to find volumes of cones.